Welcome back, y'all, to another Hip Hop Babies album review. Yes, sir. It's Dead Lee, your host. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I got my boy Ray with me, as always. We rocking today with uh, Joey Badass and the 2000 album. I don't really like the name, to be honest. Really? 1999 was like the year, and then he just goes to 2000. I don't, yeah. I don't really get the 2000 thing, but. I'm hating. I'm hating too soon. If I see the vibe for this review, let's get into it. We got to get into it, man. Uh, Joey Badass, I mean, we we haven't been able to review a, a album on this channel for mm-hmm. the entirety. It has taken so long for this, so we've had such a huge wait for this. You know, this album is not a bad album. I like the album a lot. The better albums that have dropped this year. But, you know, when I look at an artist, I look at his body of work, his discography, and just what he's doing when he's dropping it makes me like you gotta weigh things out with uh like Lil Uzi with uh Eternal Take and mm-hmm. all the hype that was built up for that album all these other albums that had monumental hype on the internet the internet just moves so fast that when you take a long time with things it doesn't always live up to what you want it to be so it's a lot I mean it's been a minute since we heard from Joey in a full length because he dropped the EP a few singles and then dip mm-hmm. comes back with this Gets Diddy on the first track. He's like, I'm back. Um, And I think Joey is the perfect time for him to come back because I feel like no one, as far as New York goes, has taken Joey's spot. The drill scene is the drill scene. All these new other rappers are doing their own thing. Joey, badass, really took over as the leader of that Beast Coast movement, I think. And they made that album together. Now he's fully back, and we can really hear what he has to say after this long time. And I knew after Head High we were going to at least get something good. This was great. Going to the title, you said you didn't really fit, uh, mess with the title. I did because 1999 was cool. You know, classic mixtape. One of the, you know, people love it. It wasn't a mixtape I played every day. I love tracks. You know, there's certain tracks on there that are amazing. It was a really good tape. I understand why it's lasted, you know, the test of time, why he re-released it. And that was such a big thing. Yeah, those songs are really good. Those are some of his best songs. So for you to put this out after, you gotta come hard. The tracks on here are crazy. Like the samples, him getting Diddy, make me feel right after. Crazy. Like I, I, I really love that track. I really love the sample was really good. The yeah. sample. I really love the vibe that Joey brings. I know the baddest kind of sets it, but I feel like make me feel was really good because it's like a lot of these tracks are smooth. You know, the baddest, you know, you got Diddy on there talking stuff, East Coast, you know, Bad Boy and everything. They were a movement, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't like sequels in general to things that don't that don't need sequels. So uh, that's mainly what I was really talking about. I just don't really like how he made it a sequel to it. And I guess now it's like, if you look at it, it's that's where he started from. And now we're here. You know, we mm-hmm. into the next year, and we're in 2000 now. And it's only been that much that much time because, uh, you know, he's so good. He says he can drop years apart, and it's only been like you know this much time, right? Mm-hmm. So I get I get it. Um, not not hating on it. I really did like you know maybe feel I I get I get you with these uh these smooth tracks, but they are they're so glamorous compared to like 1999. Glamorous. Thank you. Deadly, perfect, glamorous. These are glamorous. Um, That's why you got the features he did on certain tracks like Chris, Larry June. Perfect, right? I mean, I might not be the biggest fan of some of those tracks, but I see what he was going for. The 2000s, a lot of people say like glamorous. Um, You know, they used to use a lot of like crazy sounds. And I got some of that from this. I got like the production is a lot of sounds. It's glamorous. It's, it's kind of, I want to say glitzy because it still has that New York um, Joey Badass vibe, but he definitely did change it up a little bit. This isn't. 1999 this isn't him doing that because you know capital steez is on here like on survival tactics but then he has survival's guilt right after head high which really touches on that which mm-hmm. i really liked a lot like moments like that i feel like we're missing from all american badass and i love that project but it was different he was going for more like i wouldn't say political as people try to make it like it was super political but it was more so like he was talking about a lot of things and just talk about you know being black it was you know yeah. a really well being black it was it was a, was yeah yeah this touched on that sometimes but really it's about joey smooth beats it's like he's bringing it back to just the foundation and i was kind of mm-hmm. missing that on the other album and even even the ep a little bit this was good this is what i wanted yeah 
No, I, I get what you mean. And he's like he's touching bases, you know, he's going back to his roots and stuff. So it's it's cool. I really liked it. Uh there's not much I bad I could say about this album at all. There's you know, he's spitting on almost all of these. And yeah. There's I don't, there's only like two songs that I haven't added from this and we'll we'll get into that. But uh I like that he brought uh West Side Gun uh, yeah. onto this project. Yeah. Um, you know, recognizing the Buffalo scene. And they have their own movement. How, shows how authentic mm-hmm. and you know um, welcoming Joey is with the whole Beast Coast movement. That's really what it was back. Um, I don't know if anybody will hear was invested in that community, but I mean, it was really like you know dudes just spitting, having an opportunity to spit in front of a, a big crowd, like a, a SoundCloud era group, and it was just like really like a tight knit community you know with all these dudes um you just like you just got into a wormhole it was like you mm-hmm. go to flatbush you go to nick caution uh kirk knight i miss those i miss those days uh, so i did miss um some of that i liked what joey was doing like you said with all american badass um he did go for hits in that project um but it was also like you know him just talking about being himself yeah with songs yeah, like that, uh, that's, that's different right are you talking about like yeah, temptations that's, that, yeah that's like yeah. that's completely different than joey back in the day in 1999 doing like whatever he was doing yeah. back then so i i get it i get what you mean and um i do like that he went back i do like that uh he got larry june on this project too um that was really dope uh i think he's one of the better artists to have paired with joey recently that i can think mm-hmm. of because who else for this project would you think of just like getting somebody who's who who speaks like glamorous who's like yeah he, yeah he just, Super sleek dude. numbers, uh, keeping it keeping it peasy. Like it's almost like he heard the feedback, especially dropping those singles like um, "Revenge." Because like you said, reaching. I feel like "Revenge." People almost called him out a little bit. Like you're kind of reaching for a hit with this one. We don't want that from you, especially being gone this long. We don't want you to come back and reach for a hit because, as an artist like Joey, we know you have the lyrical ability. We want content. We want to hear what's been going on in your head. Because that was your last album. Like, what's been going on? You, you're kind of deviating. And even on that one, you you kind of had hits, but you were still trying to, like, talk about something. And now you're mm-hmm. trying to... I don't want to hear um, Trap Joey Badass necessarily. And we didn't get that, thankfully, with this album. Keep it Joey Badass. You know, and I feel like he did that. Yeah, I mean, he got... He almost was, like, perfect on who he got for features, you know? Mm-hmm. Almost perfect. Yeah, I wasn't... He got, he got J.I.D., <laughs> J.I.D. was really good, you know, does what he does, and he's, like, one of those guys who can rap with Joey, and Joey thinks that, they, you know, they're, like, same level. Um, I'm surprised that, you know, he, he didn't want to get Kendrick or, or Jake Hull on this, you know. He might he not have been, I mean, Kendrick is writing for him so hard. Hey, he is right, though. Out of all any rappers, like, lyrically, I mean, there's probably a bunch, but mainstream, yeah, Kendrick, Jake Hull. Album-wise, too, this album was up there. It's chill. But he is still, you know, bringing something to the table, and I like it. It still has some mm-hmm. substance, you know? Like like the songs we're talking about, uh, Make Me Feel, uh, Where I Belong, Cruise Control. I like Cruise Control a lot. Yep. Um, that was really smooth. I like that sample. Literally, you know, you get P. Diddy, and then you get the sample of um, Juicy. Perfect. And like we're saying with West Side Gun and them having their own movement, you know, Joey had his, and I feel like but the renaissance that the... Griselda has is the perfect, yeah, it's the perfect add-on to what the Beast Coast was doing earlier, you know. East Coast will always have that, you know. That's what East Coast rap is, you know, to a certain degree. It's dope beats, DJs, and stuff like that, and the rapper just showing what he can bring to the table, like, lyrically. Yep. Or, like, just setting the tone with that vibe. You don't got to always, like, spit, you know, 100 miles per second. There is some songs where he is spitting, you know, doing some flows. That's like, okay, man, you know, we get it. You can rap, but... For the most part, Joey's not preaching. He's not doing nothing crazy. Like, he's not boring me. He didn't bore me at all, really. It's funny because the expectations for this album was, like, what is he going to come with? Because the only thing that we heard from this man was him going on social media talking about, like, his family couldn't get to Disneyland or something like that, right? He had a bunch of, like, anti-vaccination stuff and holistic health stuff. And I was just like, man, what is going on in this guy's head right now? And... He really silenced all that with this album. Yeah, and I'm glad he didn't really get into that, the whole conspiracy stuff either. That didn't really yeah, muddy man. this album, you know. You know, some people that muddies the music, so I'm happy he kind of just, you know, focused on, you know, other things. Yeah, 
No, that's true. I think my least favorite track, and you know, this might shock some of you, was "Welcome Back." <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Joey, you know, you can make love songs. That's cool. You know, I understand. You got to find a way to make songs for the ladies, but it's not for me. I don't want to hear that. I, that's not what I want to hear Joey doing as far as a love song. I think he's done better love songs, okay? I don't know. Maybe you like this one, Deadly. It, you know, it might be your vibe. <laughs> no? No? You was hating? Yeah, I was out this one. And that was right no. after the Larry June track. I would give this, like, a, an A, but, like, you, you put that on there, bro. It's like, it's, woo, bro, it was, it was so bad. He didn't, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do this, bro. Like, <laughs> we all are here to hear you, like, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one song that would skip, like, Breach. Oh, we, do, do we talk about Survivor's Guilt at all? I mean, like, Survivor's Guilt was uh, in the same track, just talking about, like, him and uh, Steez and, like, how he was, like, detailing the story of how he was rising to fame at the time and Steez was not and how it ultimately ended up and where his headspace was at with this whole thing. So it was, like, really personal and, like, mm -hmm interesting to to listen to in general and also it was like yeah. just a, a well-crafted song so it was he hasn't really talked about stuff like this like maybe in like a couple other songs but not detailing the way that things played out exactly like this yeah it's always just like this isn't known amongst the community yeah right after head eye where he kind of starts to open up about it, he talks about um, Steve's NX, and then you go right into this one. Survival Tactics is one of Joey Badass's best songs. Shout out to him and Steve's on that track. R.I.P. Steve's. Going really into detail, you know, especially as far as hip hop. Um, him touching on how it's a trending topic to talk about mental health now, and how Steve's, you know, that was a big, you know, he, he, he ended his life, you know, because of mental health. And obviously, a, a lot of people go through things. I feel like mental health tracks can be really hard to do because. They can come off corny. They can come off like inconsiderate. Logic. Maybe like you're forcing it. He's the perfect person to talk about that because that was a big moment in hip hop. And I feel like this was bound to happen. I mean, of course, he's talk talked about it before, but this was this was mm -hmm. big. This, this was a big track to really hit on that moment. I feel like it's relevant. Even we've had people diss on Steve's, you know, like Troy Ave and stuff, you know, talk bad about him, you know. And people always, there's a stigma around mental health. And I feel like people should open up about it more. And Joey talking about that, like other rappers have this year, but him doing it in his own way, especially dealing with what he had to deal with so early on in his career. Yeah. Yeah. Because Steez was that guy. I mean, he was damn near leading the moment at one point. So he was like that guy that was really helping out. He lost one of those figures who was really, he was the pioneer damn near of the Beast Coast movement. And Joey had to take that. Keep running with it and push forward. And throughout the years, you know, there was turmoil, there was beef damn near with certain groups, but the fact that they got that album out, that Beast Coast album, that was like a big statement, and he's back doing his own shit. Dope to see, because you know, he was still going through it, you know, probably when you go make music, he he always probably thinks about Steve, because they was working so hard together, that was part of his mm -hmm. come up. I want to see more from that, especially with the ending of Written in the Stars, really slowed it down. And really got, I mean, it was already kind of slow with certain moments, but the ending really, he started to hit. I feel like that's where I could see, because he said with After Revenge, he talked to certain people and Head High, he did Head High, and that was what the album was going to kind of be like, and I see that. You see yeah. that shift where he really starts to get emotional and start to talk about things and really start to open up, and I would love to see more of that. That's probably why he took so long to make this album. So I know Joey's going to have some more crazy shit to say after this one, because this this was this was a dope project. I feel like if you were trying to get to know Joey, this would be a good project. As far as like an artist, of course, right? This would be a good mm -hmm. project to get into. I feel like 1999, I was kind of, I'm not saying I was missing that because you see where you started from and you see the hustle. You see Steve's on the project. You see uh, the people he used to work with at the time. This, I really got to see like, kind of like Joey's. I see like maybe his headspace or what he's kind of thinking. I feel like I was yeah. really kind of missing that. Yeah. Easy recommend gonna be my top 10. I wanted to say that like the flows I just think he was getting in on this project were crazy. Bro. Crazy. Like, eul eulogy. Eulogy. Mm -hmm. Like that shit he started doing at the end bro when he started just like. I think zip codes too unless I'm tripping. Yeah right after that. Yeah, there's there's not really like I said besides the one we talked about welcome back. Thank y'all so much for watching this episode. Um, make sure y'all like comment subscribe share it. This album was dope. Uh, recommended to somebody. Um, Joey. Deserves his flowers for this project. Thank you for this for this project. It's really Please dope. don't take five years again. He says he can. 
but we don't want you. We to. don't want Please that. Please hit us up. Send us beats. Send us music. Send us what you got. You want to do an interview? We do the interview series now. Um, hit us up for that. Uh, just hit me up on socials, Instagram, Twitter. Look up Hip Hop Babies Podcast. You'll find us. Yeah. With that being said, y'all, as usual, thanks for watching. Peace.